Okay, welcome back to part B and there's more in planning. And this, in this section, we're going to be taking it about decision making and how decision making feeds into planning. And we'll be looking at rational decision making model along with group and decision making tools and the pros and cons. So let's get started on decision making. So when we look at decision making, how it feeds into planning, it actually helps us make those plans okay so planning means making decisions and processing from the best available alternatives so when we in that decision making mode satisfying maximizing and optimizing are some of the things that we need to think about so when we look at a process of choosing from available alternatives in our decision making satisfying is when we quite often take the easiest route we don't want to be challenged we don't want to respond to people, we don't want to be questioned, perhaps we want to appease people, we want to make everybody happy. So we're satisfied. And this possibly is not the best way to go. Um, it might be the easiest way, so that you're appeasing people, you're making people happy, and it might be less challenging for you, but at the same time it quite possibly wouldn't be maximising your decision making process. When we go into the rational decision making model, we, we're going to be talking about optimizing and optimizing that decision making process so you have the best decision. Okay? So, understanding and having a base to start with, we're going to be looking at the rational decision making process. So, this rational decision making process I've put into a cyclical process here, an iterative process, something that even though it has a cycle to it, it can go back and around because it's never ending. As we've mentioned in the beginning of this recording, with, with management it's a very dynamic field. So quite often we have to change, we have to look at what's happening in our environment and adapt, amend, adopt and sometimes even abandon and start again. So this is why we're looking at decision making as a cyclical process. So in the top bubble the orange one, we look at defining the problem. Einstein said 95% of problem solving is in defining the problem. So this is a key aspect of looking at decision making. Looking at what is the problem, what is the issue, what is happening here. And sometimes this takes time. Sometimes this means that we should be talking to people, including other stakeholders. Then we look at identifying the, the decision criteria. So what are those key points that we need to have that are going to be helping us make our decisions? Okay, what's the criteria? And when we look at that criteria, we're moving on to the light green bubble here, we need to also weight the criteria. So if we're looking at a criteria, we might see something is more important than one, one aspect more important than another aspect. So that would be weighting it. This could be done chronologically, it could be done like me, I love to use colours, so maybe colours. It could be done percentages or numbers. But weighting that criteria, like what's really important in this decision making process within that criteria. Then we move on to the dark green bubble and generating alternatives. So when we generate alternatives, that means that we've got options. We've got, we've got a pool of ideas instead of a puddle. So having a pool and creating those alternatives actually helps us to um, make a better decision. And in helping us make that just better decision, evaluating those alternatives is important. So evaluating those, those alternatives might be looking at what worked, what didn't work, what do we need to amend, what do we need to adopt. And this actually all feeds into the red bubble about optimising that decision making process, an optimal decision. And I've put in brackets here including stakeholders. So this feeds into when we look at groups and bringing in different group decision making models and brainstorming, things like that. So talking to others, particularly when they impact the decision making process or your actual um, business goal, your criteria, then talking to others is very important. Okay, let's put this a little bit more into practice and we're going to look at optimising a decision making rationally. Now I'm going to play around with an example here. My example is based on a, a small company that I've been working with. It's a small engineering company 
and they've had problems fulfilling a sales administration role. So let's have a look at this, this in our decision making process and trying to fill this role and optimising our decision making in our planning process of how we're going to grow the business. So we need to define the problem. So what is the problem? First of all, we need somebody in that sales administration role. So that's one problem. We don't have anybody there. So what do we want that person to look like? And perhaps that we need to look at why we haven't been able to keep somebody in that role. So there's some of the things that we need to look at when we're defining the problem in this instance. Now, looking at that, we also need to bring in our decision criteria. So by defining our problem, and perhaps we looked at that in defining the problem, perhaps we looked at the environment. Perhaps the environment was a little bit too masculine if we're looking at a female in the role. Um, you know, quite often people will these days in a small business, it, it's quite challenging because you don't have that interaction with a lot of different people. Um, for example, in a corporation, a bigger organisation, quite often you have a social life with drinks on a Friday night. Yet with a small business like this engineering business, perhaps that environment isn't what somebody is looking for. So we need to look at that in our, you know, our defining our problem, why we can't keep somebody there, and then looking at that decision criteria and making the, the job application that much more attractive. So we need to evaluate some of the strengths and the weaknesses of the business and the objectives of that role. So we can optimise our decision making in getting somebody in that sales administration role. When we look at that and say we're pu putting some criteria together, um, criteria might be we need somebody with a marketing degree, we need somebody with a undergraduate um, education, we need somebody who's got a bit of an engineering background, and marketing and some sales, um, so they need to have good computer skills. So good computer skills would be a heavily weighted criteria for that job lab applicant. Alternatives. Perhaps we, when we're looking at this, this role, like straight away, I've got an image in my head of what that role looks like. Now, that limits my ideas on who I'd be looking at. So we need to look at alternatives. We need to broaden our horizons, consider those alternatives so we can create a pool and not a puddle of applicants. Now when we look at those alternatives, we need to measure and evaluate. So what works, what doesn't work, how to improve. And then we need to act upon that. We need to implement it, abandon, restart, amend and adopt. Okay, now when we look at this in the situation of employing somebody, maybe we need to look at the alternatives of where we need to advertise, maybe we need to look at the alternatives of what criteria we're looking at, maybe we need to look at the alternatives when we actually put out that call for the, the role. Okay, and when we bring in all those applicants that are applying to, for this U Butte sales administration job, we need to also broaden our horizons and look at the alternatives and take away that image that we've got in our head so that we can optimise our decision making and who will best fit this role for sales administration. So hopefully you've bought, bared with me while I've played around with that. And I want you guys now to pause and take a minute and look at the rational decision making model. But I want you to look at your, um, your decision making in the terms of making a decision by yourself or making a decision with a group. Now when they, with that group, you might even be thinking of a small, smallish sort of group, and I'm going to say your family because my family's small, but maybe your family's big. Um, but a family decision is a group decision. Think about some of the, the ways that, you know, if you're in a sports team, perhaps in a sports team when you're deciding what's happening, how does that work? Does somebody have to be the leader? Does somebody have to look at um, managing that process? What are the pros and what are the cons in making a decision by yourself as an individual or with, when you take into a group? Okay, so perhaps you'd like to even make a table and list those pros and cons. So that's part of the, you can put those notes in the unit site that we've given you space for or that notebook that I know you've got handy and you want to take your notes down. So pause the recording and note your thoughts. Okay. I'll continue on to the final slide and look forward to seeing some of those 
discussions on this and listing those pros and cons about that decision making, whether it's best, what are the pros as an individual, what are the cons as an individual, what are the cons and pros of group decision making. Okay. So in summary, part A of this recording, we've looked at the definition of planning and how it links into the functions of management, that relationship, and we explored it a little bit more in depth, the SMART model. And we've also acknowledged that there's other views, so you need to be familiar with those. In part B, B we've introduced decision making, the rational decision making process. We played around with that with our, our job applicant. And we've also touched on group decision making, stakeholders and other aspects. And I've noted brainstorming here. And sometimes when we look at group decision making, brainstorming is a great tool. Your textbook and your resources talk about some of these tools that are really handy, not just to, to help you with group decision making, but also in creating pools of ideas and alternatives in your decision making process. So thanks for listening and look forward to seeing you in the next topic.